Shite. Oh, is it? Yeah, it will. Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to the F Word Podcast. I was, I, was, I was thinking one day of just making an automatic recording mm-hmm. of the intro and then leading into it. Like on Wayne's World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, uh, we're talking to Wayne and like, here's Wayne and here's Garth. And yeah. they're all kind of standing there like looking like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Uh, hello, everybody. It's G from the F Word here. And with me is Just Vass. It's yeah. me and my brother, the dynamic duo, Just Us. KF, you're back. Where have you been? Arturo is in. Hello, hello. What's up? Uh, yeah, it's just going to be the two of us. So if uh, the dynamic sounds a little bit different, well, sorry. Um, but yeah, we're here. Thank you again. This is our second episode on Stitcher. So if you have been catching us on Stitcher, this is the second episode. Hopefully it goes better than the first where we had to start over again because for some reason on Audacity I decided to cut. It was almost as bad as the last time. There was about a two week run there mm-hmm. where it kept cutting out every 20 minutes. So I had to keep pressing record because for some reason it just did that. It never had done that for the longest time. So that was kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, we're going to try to hold down the fort. Uh, Anthony couldn't make it. Nick couldn't make it. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to hold it down as best as we can. How was your week? Pretty good. Busy. Did you go see Endgame? You saw Endgame on Friday again. Uh, Last Friday. Last Friday. Everyone saw it non-3D and in like so a Galaxy Cinema, so like really elevated seats. Mm-hmm. I kind of miss going to the Galaxy mm-hmm. just because we've only been going to the South, uh, like a Southland because it's like recliner seats. Most people seats. don't know where we're at, by the way. Sorry. Ways. Our one theater only has like recliner seats, a little smaller screens and that kind of thing. But the, mm-hmm. but the big Galaxy Cinema that we have here... Uh, has like the inclined seats kind of you can rock back a bit but if one were so inclined yes absolutely and yes. but it has a way bigger screen it's got the atmos uh this dolby atmos uh sound system and stuff like that. so it's dolby. A, so that part of it is a better experience than yeah the recliners are great and all but if the screen's kind of not meh, as good not as good you're like What's the point? It's it's a thing of convenience at the end of the day. It's closer to where I'm at, so yeah. that helps. So No, that's fair. Um yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the recliner. I like laying back. Um the screen thing doesn't bother me as much mm-hmm. because I'd rather have comfort. Like when we watch Game of Thrones now at your place. Yeah. Like you have the most comfortable couch I've ever been on. It's massive, and we just get to sprawl out all over the place. Like That's you can fit true. eight people comfortably on there, very much, and so. it's nice. I enjoy it, but it mm-hmm. also does help that your TV is massive. Yeah, so you kind of have best of both worlds. Yeah, so I really don't know where I'm going with this, um, but yeah. So wherever you're listening from, I hope you're having a good day, and um, uh, yeah. So we got some news. Someone I think had already asked us mm-hmm. already. Um, where is Anthony? He has to do, has a job to do. It's true he does, and I think he is, in fact, doing that job right now, or maybe he's playing hooky. Maybe. We'll just have to call him once I figure out how to get phone calls synced into the audio. Just do a call. <laughs> call him in the line. And, and have him do, <laughs> like, a, a Tyrion Lannister accord of what he's been up to when he's not here, mm. or what he is doing. Um, but yeah, Robert Pattinson. Someone had asked that in the chat. Yeah. He is our official... New Batman for the Matt Reeves Batman. Someone mentioned in when uh, Anthony posted it on his Entertain Facts, it's not official, it's talks now, or he's one of the top contenders, you can put it like that. So it's not 100% official. I'm going to Google this. Keep per going. se. Keep going. But yeah. Uh, at first I was like... Well, hold on. Robert Pattinson to play the Batman for Matt Reeves and Warner Brothers from R- R- Variety. Robert Pattinson will replace Ben Affleck in the Batman. That's Polygon, but um, whatever. Collider, uh, Robert Pattinson to play the... Like, all of this is that he is doing it. It's not... The only rumored one is Hollywood Life that says Robert Pattinson rumored to be replacing Ben Affleck, and Mm -hmm. that's 15 minutes ago. Um, But then a lot of them are just reportedly, and he is, he isn't. So you could be right. 
Um, there was something I was trying to figure out. Um, it was something I was trying to talk about last week, but I think I totally forgot about it. Mm-hmm. And that was in regards to Sonic and how someone had asked if maybe the Sonic reveal was a ploy to see what, how everybody would react. First, and then and make that the w- changes. And then make the changes. Maybe. Um, I wouldn't put it past some like some people in ex- like the, they'll test stuff out yeah. and they'll send it out instead of a focus group, send it out to the masses. Yeah. Which... I don't know. I mean, if they did that with, let's say, a Heath Ledger, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have Heath Ledger's Joker. That was everyone's initial thought when you first thought of Heath as the Joker. She was like, really? I don't know. It wasn't as bad. Like, to, to me, the, my first initial reaction was, ouch. I'm like, really? Pattinson? Right. Because we remember him. Pattinson. Pattinson, whatever. Pattinson. I remember him. He's the Twilight guy. Twilight That's Batman. It. Twilight Batman. What if they call it Batman Twilight? No, it's called The Batman. Yeah. So Hello, that's, Aiden. That's where my head was at. But Anthony brought up a good choice point. Is like, okay, give the guy a chance. Let's see what he can do. Which we're going to have to anyway. It's, it's going to give a different feel because he's basically taking over Ben Affleck's Batman. Like, he's not creating a new story. Like, they're not rewriting it. No, they are. He's part is, of the DCEU, is he not? No, I think the DCEU is scrapped. Like, oh. I, I, I honestly believe that it is now officially done. DC can just start putting out movies by themselves. Okay. Wonder Woman made a bunch of money. Aquaman made a bunch of money. Shazam did very well as well. And they were all well received. Mm -hmm. So this Matt Reeves Batman, from everything that I've heard, has nothing to do with the DCEU, which I'm happy about. I I, I think the DCEU should never have started so quickly. I want to see it Mm -hmm. real bad, but I don't want to see it in a catch-up version because then what you're doing is, in my opinion you are taking away from some greatness that you could do yeah. with it, with a, another set of iconic characters. That's true. The It'll, problem is they've already got the ball rolling, so for us, anything coming out now should be a part of that. But now we're, we're going to have to change our perception, especially because initially the Batman was supposed to have Ben Affleck, right? Mm-hmm. So he would have then tried to carry on that DC we would have thought EU. that yeah but I mean it's but like now a, that it's a new guy you don't think they're ever going to try to bring it back and re rethink the whole thing like forget they did their Justice League thing already mm-hmm. fine whether they'll come back and create the whole thing again who knows yeah but they've had some hits now obviously with Aquaman was a massive hit mm-hmm. even Shazam was really that's what w- I just well said. it was well Sorry, received yeah. it was yeah. it brought in some money and they're in a good spot like they're they're I think that they're in a good spot where we are looking forward mm-hmm. to their movies we are looking forward to what they're going to bring next yeah and as much as I was taken aback when I heard this when Anthony had sent it to us yeah and I had kind of the same reaction I was like because mm, he is stuck in this is Twilight guy I am too. This is, I, I haven't seen him in anything. Well, Harry sig- Potter. Yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, he was pretty good in that for a small good. role that he, yeah. that it was. But uh, yeah, that I, was before, was it not? It was before. Yeah, yeah. And then so because so you're talking of recent, uh, recent movies that he's done, I think that's the only one that stands out in my head. Yeah, I haven't seen many movies with him in it because I just chalk him up as he's not. Like an actor that I go out to look for, he could surprise. Um, I guess that's true. He could surprise everyone and have that grittiness, maybe or whatever. Who knows? But he he comes off as the pretty boy. He doesn't have the physicality of the more like obviously. He doesn't look like it. He nope. does have the jaw though, which is very important. True. The the dude's jawline. Yeah. He could cut glass with that thing, and his like the cheekbones. They're going to have to raise the cowl a little bit to get those cheekbones to fit. Yeah. He did a movie in 2017 called Good Time. And on the thing, it looks like he's pretty gritty in that one. Then we Mm -hmm. got Twilight, Twilight. Um, Is that the one that picture was shown? No. No? No. I mean, he's been around and I just haven't seen stuff in there where I'm like, whoa, this guy could do it. Um, But I mean... Even Ben Affleck has had a bunch of hits and misses because you're looking mm-hmm. at the dude that was doing Daredevil, right? That's doing true. Batman, but then he—I mean, he was incredible in a lot of other stuff. So, yeah. Um, Ace of Spades just says that the that the DC is a sloppy, but the animated movies are oh, a lot better. Yes, and everyone. And loves I haven't them. actually watched the animated since like 
back when like we were watching them at like morning cartoons and that kind of thing. So good. That Batman Beyond, man. Batman Beyond. Like that I would have been excited mm. for if they kind of went off the rails and just do the quick Batman Beyond movie or in the whatever. vein of like into the Spider Verse, like Ex- something like that. You know what? Even as animated, I think it could work, but it yeah. needs that motion picture feel what Spider Verse brought to it. Because I was so, honestly Spider Verse to me, I was very skeptical at first. I didn't know what to expect. I'm like right. an animated Spider Man, like really we just got Tom Holland's you know, Spider Man. We already got that. What do we need the animated for? Because it's turned, kind of like confusing of where does this fit. Partly that, but partly like why? Hey, but everyone's kind of doing their own thing always. But it's just funny that they did. They released two of the same within like the same decade, or not? Sorry, within the same year. Right. Spider Verse came out the same year as not a year after, two years after Civil War, right? Something like that. Really quick. Anyways, you already last got. Year. It's like this past December. So Spider Verse came out last year. And Civil go, War would have came out twenty seventeen. No, that was um, 2017 was uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. So we got Spider-Man Homecoming after Civil War. So in the same year almost. I think so. So whatever, a year difference yeah. roughly. And you got basically the same character. So I was, But I was blown away by it. I loved the story behind it and they mm-hmm. did a great job. There's only like like we had talked about how like it was just a little too much for the eyes for most people. Just, even for, myself. for me, it was just in the beginning, like yeah. just that opening credits. Uh, what else are we getting in the chats? Uh, KF said he's mad at the PS4 controller. That Civil happens. War was 2016. Thank you, Arturo. So 2016 Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming 2017. And Arturo says it'll be a great career boost for him if he does a good job. All it takes is that one to break you out of it. Yeah. And yeah, he might be typecasted from then on as the Batman or whatever, but... It'll be a role for him. It'll be a role for him. Well, and and something he could probably... Because as a B-list, kind of B or C-list actor, I guess you could say. Yeah, I don't think he's in the... Okay, so the thing with, with actors these days, there are very few that are your mainstays. Mm-hmm. And by mainstays... Sorry, not mainstays. That's the wrong term. The ones that are... Once you put them on the marquee, people are going to run to. Yeah. He is not one of them. Yeah. There's nothing uh, negative, not really. like, And there's also nothing super, super positive about him. Mm-hmm. This is going to be one of those cases where I know that the fan base and like uh, I, the internet's going to start setting things aflame. Yeah. And I, when that happens, I really hope that Matt Reeves is like, no, this is my guy. Yeah. Because let's not forget, Matt Reeves is a very good director. He gave us the Planet of the Apes movies, which yeah. is arguably a one of the top trilogies ever. And yeah. in under the right direction, a lesser known or lesser revered actor, I believe, could be elevated. Mm-hmm. because his bar is set so low. That's the other thing. His bar is set low right now, especially if the internet yeah. starts running crazy with not my Batman and I don't need the Twilight Batman or, yeah. or whatever. Oh, all they'll of be that out there stuff. for sure. Yeah. So, but because Matt Reeves is behind it, mm-hmm. because you have what I, who I consider a very masterful director, yeah. I'm not that concerned. I'm yeah. not as concerned as I would have been, right? Because I was one of the people when I heard about Heath Ledger. I love the guy in um, A Knight's Tale. I love 10 Things I Hate About You. Um, I like Broke Back, Broke Back Mountain, but I Never didn't see it. him as the Joker. Mm-hmm. And I was one of the people that when I saw the movie, I was like, well, I was fucking wrong. Like, yeah. I'm an idiot, right? Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people were like that. <laughs> yeah. So ever since then, he's it, that's kind of been the, the test for it. So, I mean, we'll see. It's, uh, you know. Big news, finally been able to drop something the day of, yeah. as opposed to having to go back. Anybody else say, I think I saw Arturo had posted something. Uh, nothing much. He, he, said, oh, he was the he one that said, said the about career the choice. career yes. post, yeah. Yeah, and if, um, and if it goes well, like, it, I don't even think it'll be a typecast situation. I think people will just look at him as a serious actor. Like, mm-hmm. it, this is going to be a serious Batman, a darker, grittier Batman. Yeah. I think this could be, I don't know. He's got the brooding face. We'll give him that. Yep. You could pull that off. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, Ace Spade says that the Batman versus Batman versus Superman is just a mess that mm-hmm. people wanted to like but couldn't. Granted, the DCU animated movie Death of Superman is what they need to put in theaters. So this was the I guess that was their version of Death of Superman. Well, they that's what they did trying to kick it off, right? So they they the, they shoved it in there. Yeah. In a way that I believe myself and the fan base felt it was unearned. Like it wasn't earned for you to use that. Yeah. Um, you didn't deserve to use it in that movie. Mm-hmm. You just did it to put a pseudo cliffhanger at the end of your weak movie. Yeah. Right? And, and no one bought it. And if it, they were going to do it, they did it the wrong way because let him fight the fucking guy. Mm-hmm. 
don't just let them fly in with a spear and just die right away from that. Like it just, it was very cheap. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if they'd ever go to, to that route again. But. Um, Justin Sanchez says, "What are your pins on Phase Four? Hmm. So, MCU. Guess there's not much MCU news this week. But uh, as for Phase Four goes, I yeah, think I'm just gonna turn this over. Yeah, don't worry. I don't worry. He answer says. the question. Look at that. Anyways, uh, do ahead. you care? About phase four? Yeah. I'm still excited. I but I've been telling anyone I've talked about like seeing how many like they asked me oh, how many times you've seen it. I'm gonna see it four Wait, times. wait, wait. Jimmy, what's up, man? <laughs> it's my buddy Jimmy. Uh I can notice this face from the picture. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. What's up? Uh anyways, so anyone that's asked me like, oh, how many times you seen it? And again, was like four times, like, oh, what do you get out of it? I'm like, I just get pure enjoyment out of it. And the thing is, we'll never get to experience uh this the same way they could try yes. to they could try to build up another set of like five six movies and then release Avengers four yes and uh, but it won't feel the same this mm. is like in you know the same it's thing done. doesn't the same thing doesn't happen twice right it won't feel the same we'll still enjoy it mm-hmm. I will still enjoy it because mm-hmm. that's my that's my initial reaction to most movies did I enjoy it did I have fun and then I can start piecing it away and saying okay what. What, how I can get technical with it and what I didn't like story-wise and blah, blah, blah. But my initial reaction that I enjoyed it, I'm game. See, for me, it's this. Um, I'm not. I'm still going to watch the movies and support them be- for what they did. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't feel the same way. And I don't think we will. we can feel the same way. And the reason is, is because the anticipation leading to Endgame mm-hmm. was... Built upon, okay, we get our first Iron Man movie. We finally, and then we get Nick Fury at the end of that one as a prose credit scene saying, let me talk about the Avengers initiative. Yeah. You can see in that movie that they were laying the groundwork for some things to come, especially mm-hmm. when they, obviously when they dropped in, dropped S.H.I.E.L.D. before yeah. they had the name, the acronym. Yeah. Um, if one's following that versus Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel, they actually had the acronym, like they yeah. they were called Shield then. So mm-hmm. whichever one you decide to go with, either way, there there was the plans laid out in Iron Man, but I don't think they realized it. And there was that article you sent me that we talked about last week mm-hmm. that was talking about how this whole Infinity War thing yeah. really didn't kick off until Thor: The Dark World, when we were introduced to the Ether. That was the first like intro. Yeah. That's like how important it is. Not that it was the the greatest movie in the whole MCU, but it was a catalyst to actually getting off to this point. Yeah. So then we finally get the first Avengers Mm -hmm. and we're like, wow, this is building to something. Mm -hmm. And then you think that's it. Then it keeps going with some other ones. Um, Some good, some not, obviously. Like you got Iron Man 2, um, uh, Thor The Dark World, which we talked about, that are weaker ones in Mm -hmm. the entire universe. And then you've got, let's say, Iron Man 3, which wasn't as beloved Mm -hmm. by a lot of people. Again, I still defend it for certain things, but I completely understand why they did. And then you start seeing these things getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're now getting involved in something Mm -hmm. culturally that is becoming bigger than the medium that it's presenting to. Like it's bigger than movies. It's big. Like people's YouTube careers have been built on on the MCU. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it reminds me of when Lost came out, and it was the first time that I'm sitting there watching a TV show with my friends. Jimmy included, and we're wondering what the hell's going on every single season, every single week. Yeah. So we're watching that unfold in the MCU. Yes, we've got some lower episodes and some higher ones, obviously. Mm-hmm. But then we're building and building, and then all of a sudden we're we're getting to something that we've been in, invested in in so long with specific characters that are now leaving. Yeah. And I think that also has something to do with it. For sure. And this is where I don't think Phase 4 and going forward will do anything for us. Mm-hmm. Maybe not again, not for us, but we've had the end game of that year, that eleven year run. Yeah, and so once it finally got to that, you hit this like beautiful climax in the whole thing, mm-hmm. and we we have our send offs for whoever we're sending off. We have certain changes in certain characters throughout the whole deal, mm-hmm. and now it's kind of like, all right, let's let's pick up where we went left off, right? Yeah. It's like The Office when Michael Scott left in season seven, and now we're going to continue on because we're still invested in these characters. Yeah. I'll still watch every Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I'll still watch every Doctor Strange, every Spider-Man, not Captain Marvel, and just keep going and keep going with the Guardians Yeah. because now we're just invested in the characters 
and it'll keep keep getting bigger and bigger. But yeah. what we've just witnessed, which I've said a couple of times, is unprecedented, mm-hmm. right? And, and on a global scale, yeah. that's what makes it so huge. That's what makes it so important. Mm-hmm. So I think what also you're getting out of it when people are saying like, what are you getting out of the fourth viewing of it? Yeah. I'm getting to see all the things that have mattered for the past 10 years. Yeah. The, 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 I'm getting to, to witness this TV show and movie form unfold in front of me that I get to discuss with my friends about and speculate and enjoy and laugh and get emotional about and get yeah. angry at mm-hmm. too, right? Like all these things that are leading up and then all of a sudden you get that catharsis where I was remembering... When people were talking about Civil War and saying, oh, the splash page in the comic is all the the, the heroes and stuff like that on there. Yeah. They gave that to us in Endgame. Yeah. Obviously not with the X-Men and some other ones, but we had everybody there. Yeah. That was that was the circling around the Avengers where yeah. it's like, look, we brought these six together and we're doing it. Yeah. This is our triumphant moment mm-hmm. in the movie and out of the movie. Yeah. Right. And then now we're just going to continue and disperse. And there's still going to be some cool things that they're going to do. Absolutely. It's just going to be tougher to be as invested as before Mm -hmm. to that level. That's fair. Um, But there are two points in that that I wanted to bring up. Unless you had something else. With this, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Deadline, I believe, had an extensive interview with James Gunn. Mm-hmm. And he finally opened up about him coming back to the Guardians. Also, yeah. was there anything that were that somebody anybody brought it's just up? Just more about questions. That? We can get after that. You're done this okay. whole spiel. Um, he put a lot of the onus on him. Yep. Which is really surprising. For me. It's it's both surprising <clears throat> and it's really big of him to do. And yeah. to a point, I almost feel unnecessary because again, those tweets happened years ago. Yeah. And if you don't believe that people can change then you clearly don't believe that you as a person could ever change. Yeah. Cuz I could if you're one of those people that are yeah, screw this guy for something he did 10 years ago, mm-hmm. depending on what it was, and this was just a tweet, mm-hmm. words on this fake yeah. bird or whatever, not a physical act. Um that's when I could easily go to you by your own logic, then you are the exact same person you were 10 years ago. Yeah. Which isn't fair. Yeah. And so he put a lot of the onus on him. But uh, uh, one revealing thing was that he talked about connecting to Rocket Raccoon out of all the characters. Yeah. Um, and how it he's hinting, or it looks like he's hinting, to Rocket Raccoon's end in Guardians 3. Could be. Like he, they said, his story is going to... That's where his, his arc, arc is going to yeah. complete. And, and he was really saddened and upset because he's like, I couldn't finish this. Mm-hmm. He got a second chance with Suicide Squad, which I still believe he's doing. He's, yeah, because he won't start any Guardian stuff until after. Until after, which yeah. is why it's shooting in 2020, by the way, people. Yeah. Um, and so it's uh, it's you're starting to see more and more of those original story arcs coming to a close. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like the Rocket, which will change the Guardians, the dynamic of the Guardians. Yeah. Who knows who else is going to stick around from there? Mm-hmm. And who knows how long they're going to keep going. So even these are going to fizzle out mm-hmm. in an epilogue type of way because... Those people are all a, a part of the original Avengers run up until Endgame. Yeah. Right? And the other point I wanted to make, which is something I don't think we talk about enough on this show, which I have to do better of, is I want to mention a name. I took a snapshot so I don't forget her name. Sarah Finn. Mm-hmm. People don't, a lot of people may not know who Sarah Finn is. Sarah Finn is the casting director for the MCU. Hmm. And this goes back to my point about the characters that were ending their runs. Yeah. And she is, by all accounts, a hero of the MCU. Mm -hmm. She cast the people that we have, and without her, Mm -hmm. not casting the right people, which I'm one, I used to not be one of these people, but I'm now one of these people where I feel casting is also a category that the Oscars should recognize. Yeah. Because if you don't cast the right people, you don't get the right emotions and responses and delivery and characters or whatever that you get from them. Yeah. And Sarah Finn is like top tier. Mm-hmm. If, if you're putting Kevin Feige up here, well, that's great and all, but she if she wasn't the person that cast the right people for it, yeah. that gave a Chris Evans a chance, even though he was in Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. that was part of the, I believe she was part of the Iron Man process. Mm-hmm. I have to go deep dive more into her because... It's really incredible what she was able to do. And that's why, again, we care about the MCU going forward, not as much as before. Yeah. 
But it's also why it hit us so hard, at least it hit me so hard in Endgame, seeing what I saw. Yeah. And and how it impacted everything. And when you think about the fact that Nick Cassavetes was supposed to, uh, I think he was the director of The Notebook, was supposed to direct the first Iron Man. And Tom Cruise was supposed to be Iron Man. And the only reason it didn't happen is because Tom Cruise wanted to make sure that his they could see his face. The whole time. That was in his thing. Like, it's a very actor thing, Hollywood big yeah. thing. Like, just like Vin Diesel is not allowed to lose a fight in uh, in his contracts. Mm-hmm. Right? So, because of those things, and they, they, they got Robert Downey Jr. and everything like that, like... I don't know. That's what makes Sarah Finn another person that I myself have mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately not paid attention to and not gave Matt well, a lot of people to. don't. But you always that's the number one thing you know is like, oh, that person's great in that role. Oh, yeah. So like you, they were you like, give the credit, but you don't give the shout out, I guess, you to the person say, that did. Well, because you do. think that it's a yeah. bigger it, it, like that. There are a bunch of people involved in it, but really there is a, There's a casting main person. Director. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyways, those are the two uh, points. Okay. Questions. Uh, Sanchez thoughts on Joaquin Phoenix as probably as obviously the Joker. We kind of talked about this and oh yeah, I'm, he'll be I'm great. so jacked. He's he's been great in a lot of stuff, so he yeah. has that range and definitely we're getting a different Joker altogether. So he'll I be and, great for it. And I think that movie is gonna be also um, shit. I'm blanking on his name. Mm-hmm. The hell's the director's name? He did The Hangover. Todd Phillips. I think that's gonna be Todd Phillips's movie. Like I think that's gonna be the one that's gonna really. Like Hangover was a big one for him. Mm-hmm. He also did Starsky and Hutch. He did some other ones. They're all comedic, yeah. and that's great. But I think this one's going to be his his movie. Mm-hmm. And and based on a, how how it the trailer looked and how it felt, and it's got a, a mean street slash taxi driver feel to it. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. This is going to be this could be something really really incredible. Yeah. You think your thoughts? You think? <laughs> you think? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Next, uh, just Chubzy twenty four Marvel DC Marvel dominates DC in the real life movies, but DC dominating cartoons, comics, and toy series. Yeah, um, as per sales, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah. probably I could see definitely a sp- TV for sure. TV for sure, I could definitely see a spike in the cart in the comics thing, but it's tough for people to read the comics all the time. Though, well, it, it, uh, now there's now there's there's apparently a YouTube channel on my. Uh, a work coworker of mine told me about that. Basically, like it gives you a synopsis of the comic book. Oh yeah. So like it has a picture of the comic strip. It'll go a little tell you a little bit more, but they'll basically cut the fat out of the comic itself yeah. and the dialogue and just give you okay, what's happening? How does this impact the story? And so on and so forth. So the people that are um, not inclined to the comics can be kind of tough to read through, right? So that's an option too, I guess. I can't remember the the YouTube page for it, but yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because um, DC has been dominating for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, even their Batman movie with Michael Keaton. That was the first Batman movie that I can think of because there was a Captain America in the 70s and a Fantastic Four back then. Yeah. Terrible. Mm-hmm. What Marvel was able to do, because I was listening to a biography of Stan Lee yeah. um, recently, mm-hmm. and he worked on DC, if I remember them mentioning it, uh, and it was like... This was like a two hour thing. So anyways, he he took the comic book thing and, and, and the comic book, um, uh, the way that the comics were. Yeah. That were just for kids and they stopped at a certain point. And because you've got characters like Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and everything, and they're great, but they're larger than life. These are yeah. these are unrelatable gods. We'll put them that way. And he was able to make a Spider-Man and he was able to yeah. make conflicted complicated characters that felt like they were people you knew yeah or felt like they were in situations you have been a part of mm-hmm. right uh, it's very hard to find a teenager that doesn't relate to a spider-man mm-hmm. and it's it, and but it's uh even harder to find somebody that relates to a batman or a superman right um even to an extent tony stark who was a d character in the M, the Marvel Universe, right? Yeah. Like, he wasn't anybody people were rushing out to be. Mm-hmm. And, but, again, they were able to do it now, specifically with the movies, make him more accessible and a character that people adore, right? Mm-hmm. And they're, they're very different. Now, DC obviously ended up putting out other characters that were incredible, too. Yeah. Right? So they both ended up escalating higher and higher. But mm-hmm. when you factor in all the mediums, 
it is really just the movies that Marvel has been able to take down. Yeah, you know? that's true. Uh, Chubsy also adds that, do you think the reboot of Suicide Squad is worth a reboot or just a move on? Um, mm, I'd like to question. erase it. I never liked it at all. Me neither. I So a reboot's fine, I, mm-hmm. and he's probably going to take a totally different direction. <clears throat> and yeah, I just didn't like it at all. It's not one I'll ever yeah. go back to watch for any reason. I rewatched it just, uh, what was I doing? I was doing stuff around the condo, and I was just like, I'm just going to put something in the background that I don't have to pay attention to. And I was mm-hmm. just catching myself watching it. Say it looked kind of similar to Batman versus Superman, but Batman versus Superman I've seen four times. See, that I could actually be fine with rewatching. Just like, no, I just, I can't. With Cara Delevingne and doing her popping and locking the yeah, whole that time, that alone for me is just like, well, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and, and just Will the Smith, way that it was constructed. Smith, Will Smith, who I like as an yeah. actor, but like he kind of has some misses lately. Like usually he's pretty good. And then lightly he's just been doing a couple of like, eh, really? So, but yeah. his character was fine. Is just what they were doing and the dialogue and everything behind it. Well, just, it's the movie that he's in. It's, yeah. It's, it's not so, him. It's the movie that he's in and how it's being yeah. written for him. So. And this is something we're going to talk about again on Game of Thrones because I've been really thinking about this whole thing about Game of Thrones. But we'll get we'll get to that in a bit. I had a couple other things oh, that yeah. I wanted to run down. Sure. Uh, unless there's that's, any that's other questions. That's for questions, yep. Um, James Cameron. Gives props to the Russo brothers, who Mm. now the Russos and James Cameron are two directors that have two movies in the $2 billion club. Yeah. Um, Titanic and Avatar for James Cameron and Infinity War and Endgame for the Russo brothers. And this was something that went out to from James Cameron on his tweet on his Twitter on uh, Instagram, actually. Mm -hmm. Was it Instagram? No, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Probably both. Sorry. To Kevin and everybody at Marvel, this is not how James Cameron sounds, an iceberg sank the real Titanic. It took the Avengers to sink my Titanic. Everyone here at Lightstorm Entertainment salutes your amazing achievement. You've shown that the movie industry is not only alive and well, it's bigger than ever. Jim Cameron. Mm -hmm. Really nice. It was nice, even so after the fact that there was a... It was a tweet of his that he did where there was like fatigue, like these su- how many more superhero movies could you yep. possibly do? So it's kind of it's kind of funny that I, I read the fact that he was kind of saying, oh, this is like how long is this going to last kind of thing, yep. essentially, um, or whatever, versus like, oh, congratulations, you guys topped my movie and have two top movies and domestically and internationally, whatever. Well, I think it's um, I think what it is, is at the point when he was saying a lot of that stuff. Mm hmm. I don't think Infinity War had come out yet because I remember us talking about yeah. it before Infinity War. And this is somebody that's kind of giving props where props are due. True. And this is where, again, we I don't know how much we've talked about it, but, you know, roads to redemption, like the James Gunn thing, like the Kevin Hart thing with the Oscars and yeah. everything like that. I remember Kevin Hart talking about, like, I've apologized. I've done all this stuff to course correct my life. Like, what more do you want from me? Yeah. Like, I'm giving up a dream of mine because I, I can't stand this backlash. Like, I don't know what you guys want. Mm-hmm. James Cameron got a lot of flack for that. And this is James Cameron being like, no, you guys you guys made two movies, mm-hmm. which he knows how hard it is to make, and they both cost $2 billion. Mm-hmm. And that, that had so much riding on them. So good for him. All mm-hmm. I can say is good for you. I, like, I really do hope they pass Avatar. I think they will. Even by like a dollar. <laughs> my, my guess is by Monday they will, which is another thing we never mentioned. The fact that both Avatar and another Titanic have been at the top for, for that years. long. I know it took them 22 weeks or something like that to do it or whatever, yeah. but that doesn't matter. Yeah. That is a huge feat. Yeah. That is something that like he deserves mad props for. for That's sure. both those movies deserve it. One I still 90s. love Titanic. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It still it's gets to me every time. Avatar, yeah, it's kind of gone down for me. Mm-hmm. But I still remember being in the theater. Like, there's very few theater experiences I remember. Yeah. Avatar is one of them. Yeah. And what he did there. And going off the Avatar, he pushed all of them back now a year or two. Yeah. Which is nuts to think. Like, he's had, he's had the, actually, someone did like a whole thing of where the cut, like the pushback has started with uh, where they had to. Sorry. Bye, KF. See you later. Yep. Uh, where they had to like where they started in their original release date, where they have to push it now. Mm-hmm. Now I realize he's waiting for the technology to catch up for him to finish his thing. But at this point, you can't release two with what it's what it is, and then right. worry about three, four, five 
to then expand it even more because the one one of the big things that been rumored that he's waiting for that they could add basically a screen in front of all the movie theaters where you don't even need the glasses it's just okay that kind of thing so that's where he's waiting for it to get i don't think it's gonna happen very soon and then one point, like everyone's gonna be anticipating it. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be. Sorry, do you think they are? What that are... do you th- think? Do you think they're actually gonna be anticipating it? I, everyone's been anticipating it since the first one released because it was so huge. Well, look at where it's been for how many years, right? So right. people are loving it and they're waiting for the sequel and they're waiting now that they know. Oh, there's a whole universe coming through now. There will be five movies in total or whatever it may be. But okay, at one point, like you got to release something. I don't know. That's my opinion on it, but I don't know. The only thing I disagree on is the fact that people are waiting for it because I think as the years have gone, maybe they on, were, maybe not. They yeah, definitely but, were. But the thing is now, like but that was, was so, years ago. So there was probably like when it first came out and they first heard, oh yeah, sequels happening. They were probably waiting for it then. Probably now it's been what? How many years? Oh, I don't know, like ten years. Ten years. So let's say there was a a three four year of a lull in between or six maybe even. And now we're here. We got more news. Hey, the one supposed to release two thousand nine film. So ten yeah. years. So, so it's supposed to release this year or next year, uh, the f- second film. And it's like, oh, okay, now we're all hyped again. Let's go see it because we're going to rewatch the first one. We're going to get you know into it again. So the anticipation was brought back. For a little bit, it was probably nothing. No one really cared for a bit. Mm-hmm. Now we got the news and it's like pulling at us a little bit. Hey, it's coming, but not yet. Now it's another year. The only thing is, is that a lot of the fan base has turned around and um, not degraded it, but they've, 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 disliked avatar every year Mm -hmm. but i think if he's able to bring the spectacle of it Mm -hmm. that's where people are going to change their minds right because true again we might say that we don't need it we don't want it or whatever but when it does come out i think that interest of something that has been in the works for so long yeah um i think he did something similar with terminator 2 where because there's seven seven years between the first terminator and the second one yeah and a lot of it was based on what technology was going to come out, and he was waiting for the technology to come up. Because yeah. in Terminator 1, which I still remember, when the T-800 shows, like, the skeleton is there, it's yeah. stop motion and it doesn't hold up. Yeah. You look at the way that Robert Patrick was the T-1000 in Terminator 2. Yeah. That stuff still looks good. Yeah. Like, when he's going through the bars. Oh, yeah. Uh, when he, like, turns around, the way that the effects are, all of that stuff, uh, which I found out the effect that they used for him when he was going through things was a, a can of dog food oh uh it, yeah it, it was like so like so many cool things that he did but the technology had to catch up to that to be able to deliver on that movie which mm-hmm. is still i still love and it's incredible and i still yeah. like the first one but the first one doesn't hold up as the second one so yeah. um what else we got mm-hmm. question wise oh just chubsy got into about the robert patterson yeah we talked about it earlier about mm-hmm. robert patterson yep um he said whether he's worthy of being new batman we'll see okay yeah well the it's still yeah. way early for that kind of thing so uh i'm gonna leave that other question for next week it's a desert island question so oh. i'll pose that to everybody if you want you can uh, email me at the effort podcast at gmail.com or you can uh send a message or something on uh the instagram or you can tweet me at the F words G. Uh, and just let me know what your three desert island movies and TV shows are. We're going to sleep on it because I want to have Anthony here at least. So, yeah. Have a little dynamic That's going. That's always a tough one. Um, Robert Downey Jr. for Oscar consideration. Is this just another like Black Panther play? Which, listen, I've said this before. Yeah. Good movie. Not an Oscar movie. The no. ones that it won, yeah. I'm happy for. Those were good Oscars that it should have won for. I felt mm-hmm. Infinity War should have won for uh, the technical one, I think. Yeah. But it was given to another movie that I didn't see, and it was a space movie. So I was like, you know what? All the power to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, Robert Downey Jr. for his performance. And you know game. what? It was pretty powerful for the most part. Like, right from the beginning, like, he had that emotion, like, the way he talked, even his uh, spat with Cap and the kind of thing. That's where my mind goes. That's, if, if you're, if if you're going to pick a scene, yeah. it's, it's that one for sure. But. Yeah. And, and and his consistency throughout the whole thing, mm-hmm. but that opening scene, like that, affected me. Yeah, like that. That and the, you know, I say that in a way, like, oh, if it affects me, it's something, right? But yeah, to yeah. me, it was like, this is this is a different person altogether. Mm-hmm. Also, because I saw that trailer where he was like, "Hey, do you trust me?" Um, yeah, and he says, "I do," or whatever. And I was like, "Oh, I really wish I would have seen that in the theater instead of a trailer." Mm-hmm. But. It was so much better that I got to see their reunion yeah. the way that it was because it was heartbreaking and they made him look really thin and 
I know he doesn't need the arc reactor anymore. Like yeah. he just has it as his armor thing. But just him well, pulling it out, deck, right? Yeah, oh. but I mean, just him pulling it out like he's ripping his heart out. Yeah, and giving it to Cap because he feels that he stole it from him. Yeah, from the fallout of Civil War. Well, like, was, that, was just... a be- that was a that was a heartbreaking and beautiful scene. Yeah, and the thing is, it, it was kind of deceiving too because at first, when they first came down, it was like all kind of oh nice, good to see you kind of thing. Maybe that's the initial reaction but obviously then you see them start to break it down caps going into is really oh we got to do this we got to do that and iron man's like really really yeah like he's kind of freaking out so on that scene alone yeah why not he could be in consideration why not and it would have to be for the whole i don't know if that's gonna work as a photo i need to i'm trying to figure out a like i'm cutting you off still that's fine Uh, still (laughs) um i'm gonna i'm just gonna get working on that yeah sorry what did you say Nothing. I've said that. On that scene alone. Oh, on that, that scene alone. alone well, it they're going to they're going to talk about it the whole thing, like For the, the sure. whole movie. Um, but there was that moment, and the moment with his dad was really nice. Because again, harkening it back to Iron Man when he mm-hmm. comes back, I never got to say bye to my father. Yeah. And he's like, there was there was questions I would have asked him about how he felt the company was going and that stuff. Yeah. He didn't talk to him about that for sure, but mm-hmm. he. I believe in those scenes, um, he was able to see the weight that his father was carrying and what he was involved in and how how important his work was but also how scared he was for Tony to come. Yeah. Right. There was a lot and and that was a really beautiful scene with him. Yeah. And even that little part with uh with Peter with no words the way that Peter was like Mr. Stark I dusted yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. And came back and all that stuff. And and then just a look on his face where he kind of looks at him and he doesn't believe it's real yet. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of like he he's just like you have no idea what we've been going through because yeah. you've been dusted and you don't know yeah. Any like right, but it was just it was just a beautiful look on his face. Um, yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, unless something else comes, his performance in that movie was the best one. Yeah. I, I would argue. Caps was great. That's mm-hmm. fine, but it was Captain America. It was the same. Yeah, Thor's was great. I loved it personally, oh, yeah. uh, and it was also really really heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're gonna push RDJ for sure. Hundred percent. Okay, last thing. I think I have one more thing before we get into the stuff. Mm-hmm. Joss Whedon said Captain could have lifted it in Ultron but didn't want to as to not embarrass his friend. Do you buy it or sell that? I've heard that about the comics. I don't buy it, though. Not I, about I, the comics. Like, in his movie, in his he movie. was saying that my Captain America and my Age of Ultron movie could have done it, could have done it but he didn't to, to, to save Thor from any ridicule that no. he could have had. I don't buy it. If, I don't care what he says. I don't buy it. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it, it makes it better in my head that he, he was holding on to the secret, so that didn't make him worthy. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, you can tell there was mutual respect between Cap and Thor mm-hmm. in that scene where he was talking uh, where with Stan Lee when he gave him the that drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He poured for Cap. Well, because he knew he, he could handle for, it, yeah. But, but, again, because he sees himself, he sees Cap as an equal to him, I think. Yeah. And so that's where it made it even better when he said, I knew it and everything yeah. like that. I don't know if I buy it, but and it also seems like something that if Cap never lifts the shield at all, he did just, just wouldn't have said it at all. The, right? The hammer, not the shield. No, sorry, the hammer, not the shield. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. We've got 15 minutes left on oh, the wow. chat. Uh, or about 15 minutes. I don't know yeah. exactly when we're we started. really deep into the Game of Thrones stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Game of Thrones. Start uh, on the chats. Go to town. I don't think he was worthy yet. Yeah, I, I think I'm with both. I'm in the middle of both of you. Like, I, yeah. I, I kind of, a part of me is like, oh, that's kind of cool. And that is a Captain America thing to do. Yeah. But I, I get that because I don't think Mjolnir can sense his intentions. If he could lift it, he could just lift it. Yeah. Right? Um. So that's where uh, when I think the about fact it, that I'm just like, shifted. It was like you're kind of worthy. You're but almost there. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Game of Thrones. Uh, should we start with the fact that uh, roughly 3,500 babies have been named Khaleesi or Daenerys? And, <laughs> and how now, really funny that is. 100. percent That's that is fucking God, hilarious. Totally. Absolutely. Um, also, I get some people are upset. Very. F- about 500,000 people are ex- upset. Um. <laughs> I don't think that a petition is going to do anything except make you feel like you're doing something. So if you're one of the people that signed the petition, uh, it's not going to work for you. Okay. Um, It's not going to happen. And Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry. That's not the right way to go about things. You're not happy. I totally get it. And there's a, there's a lot of you that understand each other that you don't like it. Mm-hmm. There's also another group of people that enjoy it. I think you're somewhere in the middle. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm in the middle of it all right now where I don't like certain parts of it, but I'm still enjoying because because I've been so invested. But everyone's just feeling robbed. We've had some of the greatest storytelling or retelling, I guess you can say, from George R. R. Martin's Up world. until season five or six or something. Five, See, I six I still enjoyed. I, I enjoyed six too. Most of seven I enjoyed other than the rushed storyline for sure and not a lot of it was out of the realm of possibility. But because they condensed all their, the seasons, like season seven, one more episode could have changed everything. I would I would say two at least. Because sure. it was what, seven? It was seven, but seven, eight, nine. only the last two yeah. were really long. Yes. So let's say you add one more episode, but make every single one an extra 20 minutes. The last one an extra half hour. Don't tell me it's a budget thing. Because you they guys... like like $100 million or something. I'm not going to buy that you ran out of money, even yeah. though they did do Ghost 30 in this whole... Oh my god, like so that. mad. So it's like I'm not even a dog it's, it's, owner it's, and I'm like See, that's the thing. It's for us we're being robbed because of you guys just wanting to rush and get on with this it seems like you're just lost interest. I could see that. And it, it's so funny cuz there's super cuts of all the actors kind of like being like iffy about what's happening, how their characters. But that's blah, super blah. that that's easy to do if you just take like I, but I've seen context. I've seen most of the interviews, okay. like some of the ones that have been on talk shows that they're talking about it. But yeah. other ones, yeah, it's a snippet. But I see the entire snippet, and you could take it in the worst way possible. You could take it as they're just a misdirect. But right. their facial expressions do say quite a bit for That's the most true. part. There's a few that are very obvious. There's a few they're just talking on the technical side, like okay, well, you know, they could have done this instead. Like they're giving an alternate versus like no, I'm I loved it. I love every moment of it and that kind of thing. So it's kind of funny to see that because. The actors are probably just as confused, confused, conflicted about everything at the end of the day. So I don't know. Oh, Aria on the behind, like the games revealed uh, one. She was like, you know, I was there with the horse, which symbolizes something like she didn't even know what that damn fucking horse symbolized. Like, yeah. And and, uh, first, did you like that episode? I did and I didn't. Okay, I'm with you. This is where this is where it ties into where yeah. we talk about Suicide Squad, where you have some good characters in a mm-hmm. in a really sh- not so great yeah. movie or shitty movie, yeah. depending on where you're coming from. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna say some nice things first, but not about the episode. Yeah. But overall, the acting is still exceptional. Yes. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. The acting is exceptional. The behind the scenes work, unbelievable. This yeah. is stuff that we'd only see in movies. And one could argue, was it worth it versus some other ones where you're like, it, like, it wasn't necessary to do it and it was. They burnt 22 people on screen, right? Largest yeah. they've ever done. Now, did they need to burn 22 people? Like, are, is the average viewer going to notice them burning 22 people? No. Probably not. Did that cost $500,000? Probably. Maybe. Or did it cost like $10,000, which you can give to... Uh, uh, a, a guy to render even John's fake hand on fucking ghost to give the guy a send off. Come on. Talk about um, this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> they rebuilt King's Landing in mm-hmm. a back lot in Belfast, which is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, the amount well, of work that was put in they've was done, just... like even to go back to the long night, how they, they actually increased the set of the Winterfell by 30%. Yeah. It was which huge. is ridiculous. And I can Much only imagine than season one. I can only make yeah, exactly. I can only imagine what King's Landing could have been to make that even grand. And did big. you see that behind the episode scene? I did not see like yeah. the game revealed. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't see that one. Take a look at it because okay. they're taught. They, they show them making a bunch of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the acting is still exceptional. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, I'm going to make another in those interviews because I've seen a few of them. I don't understand how someone as beautifully spirited as Amelia Clark has been done so dirty. And like whenever you see her in interviews, yeah, you can't help but smile like she's just. Like I don't know, she just seems like a really happy person, and I yeah. and uh, her Maisie Williams, Kit Harrington, kind of like doesn't seem like he cares. The Hound is really funny to watch in interviews, oh, yeah. but I'm like Amelia Clark, like she's just awesome. You just want to hang out with her and be her friend. Like oh, she yeah. just seems so awesome. Uh, Nikolai Coaster Walder is also yeah, one of good. them too. Yeah. Um, 
Even I got into the Euron. talk show. I got into the talk shows as soon as any Game of Thrones characters. I was like, eh, record. <laughs> yeah, even fucking Euron. I hated his character so much. He was such yeah. a one note. I'm gonna bang the queen. That's all. Literally, his lines were. He was. But in real life, when he does his interview, it's like, oh, you're you look like you'd be yeah. fun to hang out with. Oh yeah. Um, that's what I'm gonna say because mm-hmm. there's a lot of work put into this stuff we'd only see in movies. Yeah. And I know I've already shat on the show since the long night, and I'm like, well, none of this stuff seems to matter. And yes, True. we do have one more episode, but I'm with you. It seems like they're throwing a bunch of stuff out of the way. Um, I felt that. Uh, sorry, how do you want to run this? Do you want to go in order? I usually like going in order. Fifty. Like, so oh, we're gonna go through anyway. Like, yeah. How much? This is whatever. How much time? On the For last anybody show, that's but. watching this in the live right now, I think we're dwindling uh, in numbers. Yeah. Um, we started <laughs> off really good. Um, you can also obviously catch us um on the, on the weekends i release this this is a thursday recording and saturdays at 1 p.m mm-hmm. this is where i toss this out um for between stitcher spotify apple podcasts pocket cast i think breaker is another new one. uh podbean all those places and youtube yeah. of course so you can catch the rest of this just to answer one question yes. alex schweed how i maintain my beard conditioner and i got a beard guy i don't trust myself sometimes he's got a beard guy <laughs> yeah uh, okay, do you want to start this off? Let's you start wanna, this you off. you want to quarterback this thing? Uh, I could try to quarterback this thing. I have my notes here. This I, I literally fast. just watched it before we came here. The and I was Game like, of Thrones F word yeah. breakdown. There we go. All right. Go for it. Episode we open up. With Varys mm. writing his notes. Okay, is it Varys or Varys? Because some people call him Varys it's and it Varys. really pisses me off. It's Varys because the, okay. the actors in the show call him Varys. Yeah. I don't know. Got Varys. Yeah. Anyways, Varys writing his notes. Literal tweets. Yeah. Like the physical yeah. representation of a tweet. And is someone actually doing. already did that. Did they? I'll tell you what, just to over like over arc this whole thing, the episode in the season hasn't been that great, but the memes have been like top Outsta- notch. Top notch. Outstanding. I could enjoy Since myself episode just those. One. I know. Epi- does it enhance the whole show for me series, it enhances even more it makes it enjoy it a lot more because like some are just like, completely ridiculous from like brand stairs to like whatever we have now it's just brands is just the best it's hilarious anyways so Varys is running his notes basically tweeting out to everyone who will listen to him that hey john's the true heir and that's where they kind of focus in yep. on the episode true heir do you think he got him out i think he got some out okay because you see him writing some right away and then you see him writing another one later on there's no way he's still writing the same one now whether he got him out on a like like if he has a raven just sitting right next to his window here go next one go because every time the door opened he'd like burn it or, or hide it or only the one time he did it. the one well, time he, he hit did. it the one time he burned it the second time he right? was his little bird or whatever uh, the or... first one was his little bird so yeah. he trusted it i think he had plans what it made it seem like is that he had plans to poison Daenerys. That's why he was asking if she was eating. Exactly. Um, so if I pointed it out to me. Yeah. And then Ethan had messaged me and sent me a thing. And I was like, fuck, I didn't even notice it at first. Yeah. And then Soph told me. And I was like, well, I'm, that obviously makes sense. Like, yeah. why the fuck would he give a shit if she's eating or not? Like, why would he care? He's he's know. wanting to dethrone her. Or true. he wanting her to get the fuck out. True. Unless she shows him about something else. But yeah, it's true. Clearly, that doesn't happen. No. What was, um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And uh, she was saying that she was felt that the eyes were on her, like people were watching her, right? Well, yeah. Well, the Unsullied, like, they're kind of this... Everywhere? Yeah. She already had reason to believe maybe someone was betraying her. Yeah. Maybe she already She knew, knew that right away, yeah. True. But she she was blaming yeah. another person. Do you, um, do you think it was stupid mm-hmm. of Varys, and by Varys, I mean the writers and creators, mm-hmm. to have Varys... Who is a guy that works in the shadows? Yeah, be on a fucking beach in the middle of the day talking to John about treason, just so Tyrion can see him. Yeah, and like, that and that's our next scene is like Tyrion just looking at him. He's like, he's gonna do something stupid. He, well, he knows he's what he's doing exactly. So it's like, and then John of all people, because he's kind of whatever he is. Sure, he's like he'll entertain him for a second, but in the sense that he'll listen to what he has to say. But he'll be telling him like, no, she's my queen. I'm going to be with her, blah, 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 and that kind of thing. I don't want it. That's always been his thing. I don't want it. But Varys says, I want the realm to have a good ruler. Mm-hmm. So here we are. <laughs> well, <laughs> At and, a crossroads, Jon Snow. <laughs> yeah. And, and this yeah. is one of those things where you have mm-hmm. great characters that are put in stupid situations that are yeah. out of character because Varys would not be on an open beach talking treason. Yeah. Unless he had the means to back it. 
in the even, sense. Even then, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, the only thing I can think of is, at that point, he had sent out a bunch of his uh, pigeons, ravens, mm-hmm. birds, whatever the fuck. And that's it. And, and and the reason I bring this up is because, well, Varys dies. Yeah. Okay. I liked that scene and how he died, because obviously it was... It was always said. It was she, always said. Yep. And it was pretty fucking awesome mm-hmm. in the pitch dark seeing Drogon show like that was incredible. And that's the other thing. This episode was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Like if you turn the volume down and just watch and just watch on. it. I'm like, holy shit. Like we thought yeah. the long night had some really good poster shots. Yeah. Fuck that Drogon thing was crazy. Although I think I'm pretty sure that most people would have been like burned because they were really close to him. Like, you're looking where the fire is, and like, are you guys standing right there? Unless he's that good, he can kind of control it. I don't know. Last I checked, he doesn't have, like, precision. Um, or if everyone got away far enough. I don't know. The behind the scenes, uh, the the director was saying, why did he have that reaction when Tyrion touched his hand? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said it's because Varys has never been touched before. That's why he had that look, mm-hmm. which I think is a brilliant uh, thing like he's Connor never had that Hill. kind of like interaction with he's someone. never had somebody actually touch him like he always has his hands in and stuff like nobody actually touches him so it was the first time someone touched him and the person that touched him is his betrayer i fucking hated that they turned him into a rat that they turned Tyrion into a rat yeah. they made him they went from the stupidest guy in westeros mm-hmm. to now a rat like they're best friends yep that is a that is a blatantly stupid like irresponsible in my opinion blatantly mm-hmm. irresponsible move on Tyrion yep like that that just further reinforces the, the fact that they have no idea what to do with Tyrion or they had no idea Not for anymore. a very long time no that it's pissed you off as weird. much like we were watching it together and I was like that, what the fuck to say that like oh he's a snitch is like, it was, I think he was always going to do it because for him it's like he he decided to believe in her and he said it from the beginning I it's like they'll have their parts to play right at the end of the day Varys said it from the beginning you're gonna be with the queen fine I'm gonna go do my thing and try to get John on the thing and get sure. her out of here so it fits the how they've developed it to this point before that maybe not so much but what did you expect them to do she would have found out anyway she she came to that when they were talking her interior and it was already at the conclusion that like well she's like well, Jon Snow betrayed me because he told his sister, and then his sister told you, and therefore you then told Varys, and Varys is going to tell fucking everybody. So I get that. Yeah. But they already established that the little bird mm-hmm. feels eyes on her. True. You've already made that plant. Mm-hmm. You don't need to turn Tyrion into a rat or a mm-hmm. snitch, yeah. which in our world, snitches get stitches. <laughs> yeah. To give up Tyr or to give up Varys, mm-hmm. just so you can kill Varys, you already have a little bird there, and if people are already on him and watching him, yeah, or she feels that mm-hmm. that's your plant. You don't need to plant Varys on a beach with John so Tyrion can see him and then go to the Queen who suspected John because John, like he said, he was going to tell her. Yeah, he was actually quite honest. <laughs> Let's not even like John fucking forget it, man. That dude's a lost cause at this point. But when I'm looking at the scene and breaking it down, you've already established a, a reasonable plant. Like you've already established it. Yeah. You don't need to turn Tyrion into right now a pretty hated character in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Just so you can have Varys look at him and say, I hope I'm wrong. And then clearly in 20 minutes, 25 minutes, He's wrong, and Tyrion finds that out mm-hmm. because you already had the little girl. The very there was way. literally nothing else there except for Tyrion keeping his mouth shut, mm-hmm. Grey Worm seeing this little bird, capturing her, and making Varys confess to her, mm-hmm. or any other number of things instead of completely shitting all over your character. That's my I view. I don't think they caught the little bird. No, but I'm saying oh. they should have. Oh, yeah. In my because mind. you see the little bird in King's Landing actually later. What, not just that, though. Yeah. She already said that she feels that people are watching her. Yep. So all you have to have is somebody that's been watching her grab her, interrogate her, and then burn Varys through there, and then have Tyrion watch and be like, there's nothing I can do. Because mm-hmm. I feel it would have been just as powerful for him to touch his hand and say, I'm sorry, my friend. There was nothing I can do. Thank you or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have that exchange. Have Drogon show up. Burn the fuck out of him and then move on. Yeah. That's where I'm looking at it. If I'm, again, I've said it, a little bit of an idiot. Oh, 14 seconds, 13 seconds. Have a great night. 
See you, Arturo. See everybody on the live show. Uh, if you're still listening, we're still going. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the live show. Bye, Soph. See you later. Um, <laughs> so that's if I can if I can put a scene together better mm-hmm. in my mind. Yeah, for a guy that's not equipped to do something like that because mm-hmm. I don't know how to do stuff like that. If I can do it better, that's when I start asking these questions. Yeah. And both getting a little bit annoyed and upset and stuff. But anyways, I digress. Mm-hmm. Next. Um, who we got? Tyrion Obviously. and Jamie. No, we got... Uh, when Varys was being taken, yes, he removed his rings, yes. you noticed. So that could be kind of the... They said it's like kind of like how Pacino did in was it Donnie Brasco. He removed all his rings when he knew it was his end. It was another movie. I can't remember. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I just can't. Can't remember recall. the movie. Yeah, is it Carlito's Way? Maybe. No, not Carlito's Way. It's a different one. Anyways, because no. Carlito's uh, Way, he got he died in the train station. That's right. Um. Anyways, so he took off his rings. By Billy Blanco from the Bronx. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that was basically like it could be like how there was a uh, poison in the jewel. How okay. Olena grabbed from uh, from Sansa's necklace, so there could be something in Varys's rings, which is why he left it behind. And maybe he said, "When if I'm right, you should probably use this on her, to Tyrion." Mm. If, maybe who knows? or to John, or to John. Go to a cup. There's a cup yeah. with a ring. You're going to see a gnome. Ask the gnome three <laughs> questions. He will answer. Um, yeah. Uh, so then we move on from there, and then we go to Jamie and Tyrion. No, you're a little, or, you're a little ahead. You're so John and Danny. Oh, right. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gray worm in Danny, but nothing much there. But yeah. between John and her, that was like kind of uh, her last ditch effort, kind of to keep her humanity. I guess that's that was her scale to keep yeah. it because like I don't want it. He still said it. You're my queen. He still kind of loves her, but he's holding back, obviously. Mm-hmm. And that's where she's Well, like, what's gross to us is not clearly gross to a lot of things that are going on in no. Westeros. In the context of Game of Thrones, it's whatever. Yeah. So in this sense, it's like, hey, just kiss the girl so she doesn't go crazy. And clearly that doesn't work. So she chooses fear. Well, because I Because she doesn't have any love in Westeros. She's like, yeah. I'll choose fear. Well, and I've seen those memes where it's like, oh, if Johnny would have just gave it to her, yeah, then yeah, she would have yeah. been fine. Um, I don't like that because... I don't think that was it. I think it was part of a lot of things, yeah, right? And that was kind of like the last thing for mm-hmm. sure. Um, because I still think that there there, there was more to it. Now, this is one of those things where uh, I was watching Jeremy Johns. He had a video where he was literally comparing her to Anakin from the prequels. Exactly. And it's identical. Like he goes from one scene kind of being uh, he's he's okay with everything then being a little bit of a pain for mm-hmm. a bit and the next thing you know he's killing kids like his his jump was fucking like nothing yeah and and hers because of their rushed space in the show mm-hmm. felt a lot like that and that's why I think people are leaning towards the fact of that but we have to keep reminding ourselves mm-hmm. because it's happened so fast yeah that she wasn't respecting when she went over. Nobody really loves her. Even after the win of the long night, nothing was working. People are betraying her. She lost Masande, which, again, because they were rushed, they never gave us enough time to really give a shit about Masande, except for season seven or even season six. Well, like, she never did much sh- with Danny to yeah. make it seem like they were getting closer and closer and closer because they had more scenes apart. Or Masande not saying anything in my eyes than before. Their dialogue wasn't heavy, but it's just she was always there for her. Versus, except for like obviously that little bit of season six, was it? I think so. Six, I don't where remember. she got whisked away by the by the Dothraki kind of thing, and then yeah. they got back together kind of thing. Right. So there's that whole season where they were kind of apart, but she's been with her for quite a while, to be honest. No, no, no. I understand what the, uh, the yeah. I understand that part. I understand why they did it because the creators felt that was enough. Yeah. But for me, it wasn't enough because, yeah, she was her trusted advisor and everything like that, and they were close, mm-hmm. but I've definitely felt that Grey Worm and her were much closer. For sure. Way closer than Daenerys and her because they never gave enough time in the show Mm -hmm. to really develop that stuff, to really have her be like, no matter what happens, my queen, I will love you. I will be there for you. Everything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But anyways, I still get it, though, because Mm -hmm. that doesn't bother me 
as much as the Varys thing at all because yeah, yeah I do know their history and I and I do take that into account. It's yeah. just you've kind of forgot about it for a while. Yeah. Right? So that was that. Um next we go to Tyrion trying to convince her like just don't burn the shit out of the place. The bell. That's where he mentions the bell. Exactly. Like, ring my bell. Because he knows the, how King's Landing ring works. Like, if they ring the bell, it's, it's surrender. Game. Surrender. We're yeah. done. It's like, just please don't do it. Like, like don't keep going. She doesn't really answer yes or no. She doesn't give a nod or whatever. She just kind of tells Grey Worm, get the Unsullied ready, and that's it. She's like, whatever. Do you think it's, I mentioned last week, do you still think it's foreshadowing where he was walking by? Because they showed in the trailer where he's walking in the dragon head on the wall. You think he's going to? His, his head was right there. Based on what happens in the episode where she where he actually lets Jamie go, yeah, that potentially because she'll already know, of course. Like yep. now they'll have a big problem to deal with, obviously. But, but the thing is, Jamie's dead, so it really doesn't matter. True. Like spoiler alert, she, obviously. She already she's already gonna betray. Like she's like the next time you betray me, you're so, done too. So the act is still betrayal regardless on the outcome. Exactly. Yeah. That's doesn't a good matter point. that Jamie died. It's like you still betrayed me. You That's still let your brother go. So it's like, whatever. Yep. So she's kind of heartless that way. Um, in the night, I hear. I and mind. the Hound kind of get right up to the battlements, and they're going past. They're there. The, yeah. yeah, they're right there. So they could just slink through. Like no one do. recognizes the Hound anymore. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like they still have to prove who they are. Like these Northmen. Like what the heck do you think you're talking to? Like honestly, there was more protection in Sinuesa and Valle when they were letting villagers through. Like you've got the Hound with his weapons and yeah. Arya with her weapons. Like no one's checking weapons. That's and they a, got pretty far because clearly there's the last checkpoint before coming into the that city. That was a so. star as Spartacus reference. Yeah. If you haven't uh, seen it, it's <laughs> balls of the wall crazy, but eh, I think you might enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, then we get to the Jamie and Tyrion stuff. Beautiful. This scene that was, awesome. was that's beautiful. See, that's the that, there's those moments where you like this not saves the episode, but makes it that much more enjoyable in this or more enjoyable than what you're seeing on, on yeah. the character development parts. Cause yeah. like this is classic Thrones, like them talking, the emotional connections, like the callback the, to when Jamie let him go. Exactly. Like this is, I never thought I'd get the chance to repay it. And now he does. And so, yeah. and, and it was just the fact that, yeah, we, yeah. we get to reinforce their relationship of how he never saw him as a freak. Like everybody else did. He never no. treated him any differently than his brother. Exactly. And he was always having to, Defend him. Yeah. And he proudly did. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that was a beautiful scene. And even so, more so, like, no matter what Cersei is, he still loves her in a way. Okay. Yeah. In his own way, he still loves her. Maybe he loves her because now because of the baby, too, in the future of their house and whatever. But he he's like, I want you to go. Both of you get out of there as fast as you can kind of thing. So he's still trying to set that up and protect her no matter what. Well, because it, because no matter what happens, well, and the bell rings because he's trying to reassure him that when the bell rings, like she's going to stop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that she, if that, if, she, if that bell rings, that means she's lost. She's done. Yeah. And, oh, I got to show you this. Whoops. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. For that little brief pause, everybody. Excuse me. And then you guys can get away because guess what? It's lost. And if she catches her or you, you guys are both toast. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to bring it up now. No, I won't bring it up now. Um, is Davos the one that sneaks him in? Like, how does he just let him go? Because there's a lot yeah, of people yeah, around. Yeah, that's him. <clears throat> oh, because he talks to Davos as soon as like John and because they have to get a boat to where the battle where they're set up kind a of thing cove there or something. yeah so he's like he's like davos i need a favor kind of thing yeah. so whether it was to help basically jamie sneak in through a certain route probably he maybe he even takes him there himself or is like no you're gonna take this route this route and then you're, there's, your, there's your secret passage well davos thing. did sneak gendry out so that is a exactly that that is a call it didn't like, look like yeah. the same spot it seemed like where Jamie no, showed wasn't. up. It so, was a different one. but he probably knows how many. He's like, okay, this mm. is the fast way to the Red Keep, where Davos was, or whatever. Maybe somewhere different. Anyways, so that's probably what he helped them do. Is probably helped set that up. Okay, set up a dinghy, set mm-hmm. up a route, and mm-hmm. we're good to go, kind of thing. So, and thankfully, no one sullied caught them. Yeah, exactly. Um, next. So basically, the battle is about to start. We got. So we had that great shot. I didn't notice this, and mm-hmm. the first time, and it was until that games revealed uh, thing where the director that did this, yeah, uh, Shapochnik, Shapochnik, mm-hmm. Shapochnik, Miguel Shapochnik, he did Battle of the Bastards. He did Hard Home, I believe. Long uh, night, probably. Long, uh, he did the Long Night. He had that great mirroring parallel shot of behind Strickland, mm-hmm. 
showing Danny's army. Like Jon Snow, Davos, and Tyrion are yes. there with the Unsullied, with the the Dothraki. And whereas in the Battle of the Bastards, it was behind Jon. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Uh, Facing off against Ramsay Bolton's army, it yeah. was Strickland facing off against the Army of the North. Yeah. Which was really great because one thing I felt that they did really good, which for some reason people are still bitching about online, mm-hmm. they did a really good job of, of vilifying our heroes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by that, I mean turning the paradigm a little bit on its head where specifically in a scene later on, which we'll talk about. Well, I'm just going to say next when that got when John saves that girl. Yeah. From. One of the North men. Yeah. Right? Uh, and he's witnessing that, oh, like, th- this is us. It seems like a very George R. R. Martin thing where it's like, no, like, there are no heroes in this world. Mm-hmm. There's just people doing stuff. Yeah. Now, that obviously, that's not his exact quote, but that's how I- I've come to be. Like, you don't have a hero running in like Legolas or something and taking down elephants and everything like that. Like our heroes die. Shitty things happen and there's shitty people on both sides. So what they've done is they, in this episode, flipped it so that our heroes are actually perceived as their bad guys uh, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Because if we notice the Battle of the Bastards, our heroes were facing down the bad guys from the back. So that's just a little thing there. Um, Basically, we see Golden Company outside of the gates Iron Fleet out getting ready, like Euron's keeping an eye out for what's going on, and then Danny um, shows up. You see all the scorpions across that, and then yep. Danny shows up. So, this is another contentious point I have. They were able with precision to take out, take down Viserion. Mm-hmm. No, not Viserion. Rhaegal. Rhaegal. And I get it was smart of them to use the sun, like she used the sun this time. Mm hmm. And I understand that they sneak attacked her, even though for some reason she couldn't see the Iron Fleet. Uh, fine, okay. it's done. Is it easy for you to just blow by the fact that not a single scorpion was really fired? Like there was five scorpions that were actually fired, yeah. and she was able to just mow them down, yeah, quite easily, which she could have done after Rhaegal had died. Well, I think she was planning to, as you can see from the last, like that last episode, basically. She was dive bombing into there, ready sure. to do it, and then last minute she pulled away and whatever. So, when you look at it on that front with that episode, this do she do her doing it now in this one makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing is that the versatility of the dragon, the how hard it was for the scorpions to shift and and change directions. That I, that I buy for sure. Yes, because they're massive. They're, they're massive. Huge. They need they need a lot of people to move them. Exactly. And I don't think they have the same range. So, yeah. or not by range, I mean um, their upward movement. Like, yeah. it's not like they can go all the way up because that back end's going to hit the ground. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's where, like, yeah, she shot down. They shot down Rhaegal, but how how long did they have time to plant three to line up exactly with it? Mm-hmm. So. That's in the realm of possibility for me. And, it wasn't and, completely ridiculous. And she got him from the side because they were probably all pointing one way. Bigger, so, bigger target. So now yeah. dead on, yeah. dive bombing at you, you're not going to have much to look at. Plus, with going low, going high, with she decimated the Iron Fleet. Big the time. rest of the Scorpion tried to get her on right by the shores. She again went really low and then came high and just messed with them completely. They were done. Yeah. There, there, so there's obviously... she, made, she made quick work of all the Scorpions the Iron Fleet, and then the Golden Company when she blasted through the gate from behind. So Which the Golden a, Company was just like nothing. Well, well and, and that's that's where another contentious point yeah. is, is that you've made this Golden Army this big thing. Yeah. Which, in my mind, the only reason Euron exists is to bring the Golden Company over. Mm-hmm. Which literally meant nothing because he died. Yeah. And these scorpions that were this big deal... Because if if the dragon is 50 feet over that way, let's yeah. say, mowing things down horizontally, and I'm I'm facing its side with my scorpion, mm-hmm. at that point, I think you have enough room to get those scorpions to line up because yeah. there are so many of them. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff there where they went from her army getting decimated pretty easily to now one dragon just literally taking everybody down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the Golden Company literally being like a bunch of bitches. Just done. They're bitches. Like, they, yeah. there's nothing there for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, that was a cool shot, though, when the wall comes down. Because I remember we were watching it. I'm like, wouldn't they hear something? Like, wouldn't they be hearing screams? And then all of a sudden, they hear the rumbling. 
See, the thing is, when you looked at the overview of King's Landing, there's actually quite a bit of difference because the Iron Fleet was like way north. Right. Past the Red Keep even. On the other side. It was completely the other side. So they wouldn't have heard it exactly, and she would have just been gliding nice and soft. And I can show you the world style. Exactly. So she would have taken that out. All in the meanwhile, basically, people are trying to get into the Red Keep. At the same time. Jamie gets out, kind of left out. He tries to go in. So, okay. Jamie took off his hand and he then put it back on. He took off his glove to show his hand. Yeah. Oh, right. To show his metal hand so that the, the Lannish, attack level the Lannish armies can recognize him and let him through. Yeah. No no Didn't luck work. there. I and the Hound, though, they got through. Yes. So they're making their way. But hold on. No, Jamie did go through. Oh, yeah, he did go through because there was that shot from the trailer where the Golden Company's lining out. Yeah. And he was, he, he snuck he was that. See, and I think everyone called it, too. See, like, the thing That's is, see, he snuck into King's Landing. Yes. But, but he never got okay. into the Red Keep within that barricade. that barricade. I and the Hound did. And that was that so, side door. He exactly. Used. So then he had to go through that side thing in case you get locked out. Probably that was when there's another way in, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, Next so, from there, wall comes Kyburn, down. Kyburn actually is trying to actually talk to Cersei. Like once she sees that, when yes. he sees the walls down, the armies are through. They're starting to destroy people as they go, and he's like, "The city's taken. We gotta get out of here." Kind of thing. Ring and she's bell. like, "All we need is one good shot." And then she realized. Then Kyburn's like, "Well, the Iron Fleet's down. Scorpions are done. By the way, company's done. Like we're effed. It's just us. <laughs> All you got is this big behemoth right here, the mountain, and that's pretty much it." Um, <laughs> this is like, uh, oh, all we need is one good shot. Yeah, about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, and then we have the meetup between the Northern Army, the Unsullied, oh, and, and the, the Lannisters. Right, the Lannister that, Army. That's part where that they surrender. They like yes. they realize they're like they have their swords ready to go, and they're like, we're we're effed. Yeah, we're done. They drop their swords. They ring the bells. You have Tyrion right at the gates, and this is where Danny's perched on the front gates on the yes on the wall itself, and the bells are ringing. Right, and this is where um, she deserves a lot of credit for her acting. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you sent me that one video today where it was like literally a a month like in her mind, like they're cutting to her looking around, and then all of a sudden having this flashback montage of all the shit that happened. Yeah. Sarah going down, Jorah dying, right. Rhaegal, Sunday, yeah. all that stuff, like everything. Um, and which obviously would have cheapened it. Yeah. So I felt personally that she did an exceptional job of conveying a lot of her emotion. Mm-hmm. The f- but it all happened really fast, mm-hmm. and you can say that. And again, people are beating this ho- dead horse. Yes, it's happened all fast. So uh, taking that out, yeah. The way that she was able to convey though that buildup of emotions and having that internal flashback mm-hmm. and giving us the time because she's like someone had mentioned I forget who they're like she's perched up there and she's like this is it like I was expecting something grander right and like oh I did it and this is it and yeah. it's not satisfying enough mm-hmm. which typically revenge plots from what people say yeah. aren't as satisfying as you think so. Amelia Clark, the the way that they did that, she's sitting on this mechanical bull thing, yeah, in a green room, really having to emote all of that with nothing, yeah, like that's not easy to do. Nope. Um, and I felt that this was another shining again, taking all the baggage out of it, yeah. Which I know I bring a lot of baggage into a lot of stuff for sure, but just taking that as an individual thing. Yeah. And what she had to pull out of there and how she was able to do it and that look of both exhaustion, both unsatisfying uh, an unsatisfying conclusion to what her mind was. Ooh, bless you. And just the whole like like you just see it kind of bubbling. Yeah. I thought that was And she's staring at the red keep like the home that's it. Like, this, is, like, this is what I'm here for. Yeah. yeah. I finally come to this point and I'm staring it down and this is what I'm here for. And then she like this bucket. Yeah. And she goes just goes ham fucking hard. And she goes just decimate. And this is where that Anakin comparison is because he literally goes from thinking about being on the dark side to sure. I'm just going to kill these kids like nothing. The first flip for him, though, was cutting Windows hand off and then. That was Mace's. his flip. Yeah, that sure. That was his flip. But, but it, cutting someone's truly, hand off and offing a bunch of kids, true. that's a big jump. That's like 
someone coming up to you in the street and say, hey, how are you? And then decking you in the face and kicking you in the balls. It's like that escalated real quickly. It sure did. That's the anchor man sitting on the chair and stuff. Yeah. But anyways, she's killing everybody. Yeah. Like then, every uh, single person. Then Grey Worm, like they must have had their own plan in place. Like, I think so. Screw the bells. We're doing this. Yeah. So he was Grey ready. Worm's like, fuck it, hits yeah. the first thing. Everyone goes nuts. Even the Northmen. And John the whole time, he's like, he's... He's like, what the hell is going on here? And, and him and Davos are like, what is going and on? And he tries to stop as many as he can. And then yeah. Grey Worm is still going at it. But all the Lannisters are going after him. So he's like, I have to kill a few of these guys. And it's just ridiculous. Yeah, this is where it's the fact that it jumped so intensely. Mm-hmm. Um, and listen, uh, you've probably heard this one from a lot of people. And I'm going to reiterate it. Foreshadowing is not character development. So just because you foreshadowed her doing this, because mm-hmm. they did it in some of the seasons, like when she burnt down the Dothraki hut when mm-hmm. she was captured, yeah. that could have been like she has the potential to do this thing and she's fine with it, right? Yeah. Um, the whole lords over in Yunkai, I believe it was. Well, yeah, she was ready to like just go over there and just destroy them all. Anyway, right. again, she got put check. Yeah. Uh, the slavers and masters. The s- that guy's, yes. Everything. Yeah. So... Was I surprised? No. I just didn't think it was going to be to this extent. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I was like, yeah, they pretty much the they, whole they, point they foreshadow of, the, the fact that she's going Mad yeah. Queen. We know this. Like, but, it's not yeah. a secret. Yeah. But to this extent, it's just like, holy crap. Yeah. And this is where it was overkill. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I know in the A-team, overkill is underrated. But in this yeah. case, it was it was in, it was. Pretty is, much too which big. Is why it was so great when they were doing all the shots, you didn't really get to see her the rest of the time. Other you, than when she once she took off, that's it. You just saw the it, carnage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just saw the carnage, and that part was great. And how sure. they did everything like that. Well, and that's where they had to build the whole entire yeah. King's Landing in a back lot, and yeah. that's what they were able to do. Like, and they 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 built them in reverse. I think they said so. They were destroyed, and then they added the piece to fix them, so they're able to turn them down. Yeah. Um, we went. Sorry, what was next after that? Uh, no, nothing. Wait, wait, just what? like John had to kill that Northman for going after that one. Uh, oh yeah, I mentioned that. That was so. Aside from John harnessing his powers of brand to just stare at things, yeah. uh, at least he did something here and yeah. something that was like, oh shit, this is turning now. Yeah. Which may be his turn of, I think I have to do something that I don't want to do. Like he's yeah. always been that reluctant warrior, True. and now he might have to be the reluctant king. And as most people have found out in their lives. Anybody that says that they're destined to do something or that they're the ones that do it, they're probably not the right people to do it. So exactly. if you say, if you come up to me and be like, I should be the one running this place, you shouldn't be the one running this place. No. There's, there's like, it, it's it's almost the second you hear that, just like if someone comes up to you and is like, don't trust anybody, clearly that's going to be the guy that's going to be betraying you well, right, in a movie. That's a cliche. Um, but um, Jamie yeah. and you're on. At the beach so goal. annoying, so pointless. Apparently, the the guys called it the Dane Bowl because they're both Danish. Yeah, they're both Danes. So, like, that's part that Euron enjoyed too, and like, yeah, the actor and stuff like that. So, yeah. which is also why, like, they got their licks, and he kept, like you said, he's a one dimensional character. He wanted the queen and stuff like that, but he also wanted to get out of there. He's like, I'm, this place is done. Like, well, he was going back to the queen. He was. Yeah. I thought why was, why the hell else were you going like, back oh, yeah. the back way like he oh, must yeah, know about that back way yeah. and this is what made made it even stupider and not only was it stupid um the fact that Jamie goes back is stupid and why he goes back in my opinion is yeah. stupid this fight was kind of pointless and it was mostly just a way to get rid of Euron a character that I personally just felt was completely unnecessary he was and he wasn't unnecessary only for the fact like he played a part in the war and now, bringing, for the past th- right, two seasons down three seasons dragon i think two maybe two three was it three three because six is when she came over when did um, so six is when everything was going on and and battle of the bastards while euron was going to the queen and okay and then we didn't see him again i think till seven or okay. he was he was going after the we didn't see him after that much of uh, season six. Okay. But season seven is when he came to the queen, like Queen Cersei, and said, like, oh, I'm going to do this for you and this for you. And then he more or less does it. Yeah, which goes to show how much I really didn't give a shit about his character because yeah. I don't even remember him being in it much. But he was relevant. It wasn't for nothing. I guess I There's guess lo- because they just made him this one-note character, it really yeah. just annoyed me. I don't 
like one note characters. I, but he I was guess. funny. Um, and the that, funny that thing ending is, part was stupid though. Like him, him looking up to the sky, smiling because he seems like somebody that believes that in the afterlife, like things are. <laughs> oh, another sneeze. Um, in the Greek culture, that means I'm speaking truth. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, he's um, you're on. You're on smiling when he dies. Yeah. Seems like he's the type of person that believes that there's an afterlife and another adventure, like. Well, Captain Hook. They're the great joys. What is dead may never die, but oh, rises yeah. up again. There you go. That kind so. of thing. So for him, it's like whatever. But the funny thing is the actor is like, I love that my character died off screen only for the fact like, could he have lived? Just to mess with sure. people. So like that was the actress kind of thing. Like why? And he's the one who suggested doing it in that way. So that was pretty interesting. But them having their little standoff in there. Yes, there's a point of convenience at the end of the day. And it was what it was. And Jamie... Yeah, like, it, was super, it was super convenient that they got happen to whatever, be there. He, in the end, Jamie did get stabbed a couple of times and he's still going for it. So, hey, whatever. I just felt it, it was dumb that he looked up and he's like, I'm the one that killed Jamie Lannister. Mm-hmm. First of all, you didn't. Like, you really didn't. Yeah. So the creators, the writers didn't have to add that in there. Yeah. Because the writers know that he didn't do it. Which I guess you can say speaks to the fact that he's a delusional idiot. Mm -hmm. Like he thinks he does. Like he thinks in these grand ways. But he's pretty one track. But a lot of it, it's like, well, no, you're. That's not what happened. Like you're whatever. But I, I just thought it was dumb. But he was also a dumb character, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Aya and the Hound in the map room. So that was a pretty nice scene. I've like always liked their dynamic, obviously. Sure. And it was very interesting that, like, Sandor basically sent her off. Like, you don't have to do this. I, I got to take care of what I have and that's kind of it. So, and she accepted it, which is, I know you're don't like it because we've built, I to be this, you know, assassin. And now she's like, what? She's going to turn away from this fight. That's not why. Oh, well, that's not why it bothers me. No. Um, I guess it bothers me because I looked at this games reveal thing mm-hmm. and I, the HBO thing because they said we, we wanted Aria to be on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. So essentially they betrayed her character, someone who had said Cersei Lannister's name every night, first on her list, that started her on this pass, everything like that, and all it took was... (laughs) Yeah. And Sandor was like, you gotta go, don't don't go after revenge like my life and everything like that. And that turns her. Like she never listened to anybody, but this moment turns her. And what makes it even more upsetting like it didn't bother me at first but what made it even more upsetting is that the creator said we needed somebody on the ground floor and she's the best person to do it so essentially you betrayed the character's story arc yeah. or the way that the, the typical thing that the character would do you took that away so that she can just be the person on the ground floor walking yeah. us through which i could argue davos is just as capable to do he was and too far he, at the start right but what she did was, mm-hmm. and she, she, all she did was just lead us through mm-hmm. and, and, and let us be the ground floor person to, to witness the carnage. Yeah. She might have been at the start, sure, but the whole place is burning around them. He could have ditched yeah. or went to go save somebody and then got caught up in all of that. Yeah. So that's kind of what bothered me is that the creators decided to do this and change her character just so they can have somebody to follow during the carnage. Yeah. <coughs> Which is, again, not a thing I cared for. However, I did like the fact that she called him Sandor for the first time ever. Yeah. And that was a nice exchange, even though it betrays a lot of things that I feel they've already set up. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. The Hound go does does what the Hound does. Yeah. Clegane Bowl begins. This is an issue <laughs> I have. <laughs> Why is that? Because I felt like in, their, in the creator's attempt, uh, Weiss and Benioff's attempt... To subvert all expectations, and they said, "Well, if we give the fans what they want, then um, it com- becomes predictable and everything like that." Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it felt like they put they put way too much emphasis on the Clegane Bowl yeah. than anything else. And you're like, dude, this was kind of a funny thing that the fans were thinking of. Yeah, it wasn't that important to us. Like in in my mind, they put so much importance in the Clegane Bowl because they said, "Well, this is what we've wanted to see for a long time." Mm-hmm. Sure. And that's cool, but it's like a it's like a, a a monkey juggling on a on a bowling ball, like it's cool. And me and my friends have probably joked about it once or twice. And if I see it, then that's fine. Mm-hmm. But don't 
take away from everything else just so you can get this Clegane Bowl that you feel is really cool. Well, here's the thing now. If you're talking of like you're getting rid of someone's story arc, like I, you're betraying her story, well, then you're actually servicing Sandor's story arc. Who's more important? Well, I is more important, but you're exchanging one arc for the other just to play devil's advocate here okay. and basically say his road always led to killing his brother. Let's say that's okay. that was his arc. He was always going to be against his brother at some point in some way, and this is how it was. Partly fan service, but partly true to his story arc. No, I, and and trust me, like it yeah. is, it is both those things. True, but in the context of the entire season, mm-hmm. I felt that more the the more through line, the biggest through line in this whole thing was Sandor Clegane going to fight his brother. Yeah, that's been the one thing that they kept going properly, whereas they've been betraying other people's story arcs left, right, and center. Yeah, almost proactively mm-hmm. making sure that this Clegane Bowl thing yeah. happens, which yeah. in my mind is fine, but there could have been a lot more things that you could have done. Now, mm-hmm. the battle itself was pretty awesome. Yeah. And even though the how the mountain looked like Darth Vader, yeah. he's fucking menacing as hell. Yeah. Like that was that was crazy. And oh yeah, you could barely die though. You stabbed the guy in every which way in the eye and everything, and like still, he almost got uh, Oberyn, <laughs> Oberyn yes. Martelled. Oh, just, big time! Just about the hound. His right eye, I think, was the only one that was I like th- he could barely see through. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other good thing about that is that Kyburn got his like got oh, taken yeah. out real good. Like, and this is where I'm like thinking, okay, did the mountain not like Kyburn this whole time? And when did he stop listening to Cersei? Like, when did he start yeah. developing his own thoughts? And maybe if you're looking at it from a psychological standpoint, um, his recall of his brother has been the thing that's been driving him. I think him. that's what it was about. And like, yeah. it's not, again, it's one of those things that you're kind of at first like, really? But then, okay, fine, it makes sense. Yeah. Not completely ridiculous, but like, he's more, I'm going to kill this bastard that I've been fighting with my entire life, despite me being a mindless mutant right now, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. So, yeah. And then, like, Cersei just quietly slips away. That was so funny. Like, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah. I, uh, going to... We're going to talk about... Actually, we're going to talk about Cersei, but whatever. Um, the other thing is, with this Clegane thing, is, to me, we only got the conflict on the Hound's side. Mm-hmm. Okay? And... It wasn't like they ever showed them again, except for the first season. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, Ooh, that was a burp. Fighting each uh, other, fighting each other. So again, it was one of those things that was almost a meme, and I didn't really feel the weight of their conflict. Yeah, like I didn't, and that's because for seven seasons or so, they were never in the same room. Yeah, and it was just a one-sided thing. It wasn't like the mountain was wanting to go after his brother and vice versa. Yeah. And there was this like thing building and building. So you take this thing that was in the hierarchy of what this show is about, mm-hmm. probably at the very bottom. True. Okay. Uh, next to Dorn. Because hmm. Dorn, no one like seems to give a fuck about Dorn. Not anymore. Um, and, and then you have this, this thing go down. But again, the way that Sandor went out yeah. was fitting. He, he needed fire to fight his fear of fire and take out his brother and yeah. where it started and the whole circle thing. And stuff. Exactly. So that was that. Uh, Jamie and Cersei find each other in the map room. So like mm. she pieced out from the Caligula and let them do their whole thing. And then Jamie finds her kind of, thing. her reaction was great. Yeah. I hate, hate the fact that she had so little to do. Mm-hmm. You take the best actor mm-hmm. out of all the male and females. She is the best. Mm-hmm. Okay. You take her and you reduce her to someone that makes that that gets like a million dollars or something per episode. Yeah. And all you have her do is stare out the window. Like her last go is her just staring out the window, slinking by the two brothers fighting in a very comical way. Yeah. And yes, her when she sees Jamie, this she's an amazing actress. Yeah. She brings it out. Yeah. But she does nothing. Like yeah, it meant like it almost felt like it meant nothing. Yeah, 
you know uh, that's just my, my what did you like did you like it did well it, was, it happened the way it happened it was what it was so like then they're trying to escape through the dungeon and that kind of stuff and we all know how that turns out well yeah. and, and this is okay this is something we never mentioned last week last mm-hmm. week we completely forgot to mention the fact that jamie uh i, uh, I said that I, I said that i hated that he slept with brianne and i hate it even more now so anybody that was on board for the fact that jamie had slept with brianne mm-hmm. This is when I can be like, I'm right, you're wrong, Mm -hmm. okay? Because it was such a betrayal for him to sleep with her. Yeah. And not only that, betray his entire character arc to leave her. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, it's shitty that he's leaving her. I don't know why he decided to leave her right now. Yeah. I thought it was more of a thing of if, as long as she's alive, I can't find peace. And I can understand from a character perspective that everybody has might might have forgiven him, but he hasn't forgiven himself. True. Well, don't go back to your sister. Just and, does. <laughs> and go back to her in a loving way. You go back like to kill the disease. She's the disease. Yeah. She makes you worse. So it makes it even worse that he slept with Brienne. Yeah. Because he ends up betraying his entire arc to go die with his sister, Mm -hmm. which makes him sleeping with Brienne mean absolutely nothing. Yeah. And this is it. Like, and and you guys know me. I'm not an ist. I'm not a feminist. I'm not a sexist. I'm not an ist. Manist. I'm not nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it the way that I'm seeing it. And they didn't need to sleep together. And it just makes it even shittier because if it was, again, a, a female doing it to a male, it would still be the same level of shittiness. Yeah. Like, that would be stupid. Yeah. Okay? And so, for him to do that, completely throw away his arc, to go back to the beginning, to hold his sister, and then for Cersei Lannister to die by crumbling rocks while Jamie is holding her? As far as we know. <laughs> no, Jamie's Jamie's busted up hand or golden hand is not protecting her face. Oh what? Um, <laughs> that was one of the worst things. Yeah, her Joffrey had a fitting death. It's true. Her other son that I don't even remember jumped out of Tom. a window. Yeah, that was a fitting death. Her daughter, a person we've seen three, four times maximum, mm, had a fitting death. Yeah. She's maybe like an all of one or two episodes. Sandor Clegane had a fitting. Even fucking Kyburn just died. Yeah. And you're giving. He was kind of a nut. He came from nothing and he just went back to it. He was like, whatever. Yeah. So (laughs) you're giving one of your best actors Mm -hmm. and one of the characters that everybody loved had the great story arc with in Jamie. Mm hmm. A real, you're doing them really dirty. Yeah, like we've talked about that a lot on this show. Yep. Doing people dirty, they did those two ter- like dirty. Mm-hmm. The fact that other smaller rolled characters had more fitting deaths than that. Yeah, like this is goes back to another thing that I would have done. First of all, I wouldn't have like sure have her go Mad Queen, mm-hmm. but before you go Mad Queen, you rise up the keep and you burn. Everybody, that would have made more sense. you have a stare down between Cersei and and, and and the dragon, and as Missandei had said, Dracaris, she gives a Dracaris, and she goes out just like she took out the Sept with wildfire. Yeah. She goes out with dragon fire, fire. Yeah, like, and I am not a person that should be like that's good at coming up with really interesting scenarios, and that's what makes it so frustrating because yeah. it's so lazy. Mm-hmm. And you you did that to a character. I'm I'm naming this episode "Doing Her Dirty." Mm-hmm. No, maybe that's not. No, it's gonna that's gonna give the wrong message. I'm gonna yeah. Come but anyways, that's that really bothered me, and the fact that it makes the 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 Jamie and Brienne thing just mm-hmm. doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, yeah. He already knighted her. That was the biggest gift he could have given her. Yep. It was beautiful, and then they ruined it. You unless, know, unless he had a bigger gift to give her. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, did you like her death? Out of all the shit that I said, did that resonate no. with you? No, I actually thought she was just gonna get burnt right on that balcony and call it a day. Yeah, but take it all out. She already did take out the top. At, at the end of the day, let's say I'm watching the story progress. Okay, my initial thought of her dying didn't happen. Now we move on. Okay, so as soon as I got in the dungeon, I'm like, they're just gonna get collapsed in. Yeah, that's it's it. Weak. 
It's very weak. I agree. It is weak. It's not great. If it is what it is. If anything, in that moment, it would have been great if Jamie killed her, and then he, they they go down together. To go that too. Like if if he stabs her, yeah, lets her see him stab her, mm-hmm. and he can finally just breathe and then die. That would have been a fitting death. Yeah, that would have been, I believe, a beautiful mm-hmm. reversed or warped Romeo and Juliet type of yeah. death. Yeah. Like, and it would have been fitting for both of them because his story arc would have completed by him killing off the thing that was killing him, essentially. Yeah. And that's it. He's good. Yeah. I it would have know. felt like Frodo getting rid of the ring. Sure. 100%. Yeah. Fuck. There you good. go. Well, and one could argue that the throne itself is a ring to Daenerys. Oh, for sure. People with power. Mm-hmm. But the ring's an inanimate object with some powers. It's how the person wields it. Uh, no, the ring has like pure evil in it. Anyways. Oh, it does. I really am not good with my Lord of the Rings. Yeah, one hundred percent. It has. Thanks. It has like the will of Sauron in there. Like it just turns everyone. What if? What if you, the ring, and Sauron just went to some therapy sessions? Maybe we could turn that evil into something good. Let's give them something to talk about. Anyways, uh, well, sorry. Go on. <laughs> So basically, the while Daenerys is laying waste, we see all the caches of wildfire, just yeah being let off, and yeah. justly so because it was always said so that there was caches of them everywhere throughout Car- like King's Landing because that was the Mad King's plan from the very beginning: burn them all. Literally, he had like probably one fuse and just start lighting the shit out of everything and everything. And it would have start up. from the bottom and rose right. Think except the yeah. Baylor blew up. There's already the ma- most biggest cache was probably under there. Next, yeah. even the Red Keep. Who knows? Yeah, I'm but, surprised. I was really expecting them to have the wildfire burning the other side of King's Landing. Well, it, it came off in like pops no, I meant and stuff like, like she would have lit it, ignited yeah, yeah. it. Oh, well, like, yeah, you've but, got fire, so do I, bitch. Yeah, but to the point, Cersei wasn't that much of a monster to say that she would destroy that many people. Well, and I think her whole thing was make her look bad, but then she just let it grow and grow yeah. and got bigger until. Um, in this instance, that's where John calls a retreat and everyone gets the fuck out of there. Like, yes. Help everyone get them out she, of there. I don't think she can see what's going on. Oh, she doesn't know who's who and that doesn't matter to her. She just go off. And I believe she the... might have killed how many Unsullied for all I know. And, well, apparently there's a thousand Dothraki still in Unsullied even though okay. they should have all died. But yeah, that's 100%. another story. Um, um, and now, then throughout all this, we're basically following Aya too. Like it cuts back and forth to her. Like With she's that getting, family that couldn't get in before. Yes. She got is, in... And she didn't, and, yeah. and the, that the the mom and her daughter, didn't. who's holding a white horse herself, were they holding the white horse? From the she beginning? was. I yeah. never paid attention. She had like a little doll or something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a doll horse, not the. Yeah, sorry, oh. not not the horse itself. Oh, okay. She had a, a horse. Doll. That made sense then. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you follow them. I tries to help them. In the end, they burn too, and like after that last sweep kind yeah. of thing, and that's where, yeah. Well, yeah. okay. So Tyrion, which we didn't talk about, mm-hmm. obviously seeing with that with that wall breaking down. Beautiful he's, shot of him in the middle, there, yeah. and uh, he realizes that Varys is right. Yep. And just a bit. Uh, another thing is this whole Arya sequence. Although I hate how they got her there and why they got her there, literally to be our GoPro. Yeah. Um, it was intense. Mm-hmm. I felt claustrophobic. Uh, they had that crushing scene uh, that John had in the Battle of the Bastards, where he was yes. underneath the people. Yes, she was getting trampled. And Holy crap! That like oh, it elicited emotions in yeah. me but the claustrophobia and the sense of of chaos and despair yeah are really hard to do yeah they're even in movies they're really hard to make you feel like mm-hmm. you're like the walls are closing in and things are blowing uh are blowing up mm-hmm. i felt they did a masterful job with it yeah and and that whole sequence was pretty incredible obviously they tried to fake us out a couple times thinking that Arya died yeah sure it's she's not gonna die yeah the makeup on her was really good it was amazing uh Maisie Williams was amazing in it again mm-hmm. all performances stellar except for the fact that they never gave Cersei anything to do that's true um and then yeah mm-hmm. she's trying to save the family and then they all burned true. yeah and then bas- basically like there's no one else there she's like the only one left and then mm-hmm. the horse arrives and yeah she escapes so a shout out to one of my coworkers, Brandon. He actually gave me the idea that that might have been Bran in the White Horse. Like he sent her an Uber. Yeah, basically, it's like, hey, I'm here. Your Uber Bran is here. So that's okay. a that's a pretty good theory as well. That 
that could have potentially been Bran, or it's just. I think you had mentioned as soon as we like finished the episode that that's like her freedom and that's she's getting um, there. There was a couple things. Yeah, uh, at first I thought it was freedom. In uh, mythological, and I believe theological terms, mm-hmm. a white horse is signifies death. Like in Norse mythology, it signifies mm-hmm. death or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she considers herself as being death itself. Sure. So there's that. Um, so maybe that was the case. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, She rides off though. Yeah, she um, it, it just it, it would seem again that seemed like a little bit out of nowhere and mm-hmm. something to create a really cool shot which yeah. that whole point from her getting up with the light coming through the two buildings and stuff leading up to the horse and everything like that I mean even Maisie Williams didn't know what it symbolized she just said it's she literally said it symbolizes something yeah. which is really weird um, and then yeah. she rides off yeah exactly and that's it yeah pretty much um, throughout all this though it brings me a callback to the season two prophecy when she was in the house of the undying, you know, mm-hmm. she's walking through basically the, the red keep in the throne room and it's snowing. But, uh, again, a core mind gave me the idea that that could be the ash, not snow. That was one thing. And the other one is that it was actually snow okay. and that the snow is actually John snow. Oh, okay. And that's been in there, which could mean a couple things where, um, his memory is always there. Like she might be there. She's obviously alone in that thing. There's nobody else around. Yeah. So she's, she's sitting in this throne room with nobody to rule over. And this presence of Jon Snow mm-hmm. is there, which too. at this point he's Rhaegar he's or Aegon. Sorry, Aegon. Rhaegar. Yeah. He's Aegon. That's it. He's not Jon Snow anymore. As far as everyone's he's concerned, he's still Jon Snow. For sure. Until, Until those birds come out. Exactly. Until yeah. like, that's that's the thing. Where do we go from here now is the fact that you have to wrap up how many storylines now. How are you going to end this? Like, what's going to happen? Who's going to, like, I can't, I don't even know. Because like, the last one is literally coming. Sunday. Like, the, it's sun, it is in a couple days. When yeah. if, you're, if you're listening to this on the weekend, you've probably already prepping to watch it or you might have already watched it already. Yeah. Um, which, you know, cool. Um, it's going to be really hard for people to be on board for the finale, I think, because of how upset they are with the whole thing. They're still going to watch it. That's not going to... Of course they're still going to watch it. Because we're invested Everyone's for still how long. Watch it. Yeah. yeah. Like I said. And maybe, and maybe they'll, you know, I doubt they could do anything that fantastic in this to basically say like, okay, we'll let the rest of it slide. I Unless can't John imagine. becomes a Night King. Who knows? That was yeah. a theory that someone had put out. That he becomes I saw a Night King. That he actually becomes a Night King. Oh, shit. That would be pretty wild. That would. And then he does go north. Oh, hello. Uh, There's lots that could happen now. I have no idea. Maybe Sansa's been preparing an army. Maybe she got uh, one of those letters and been rallying support for him. Yeah. Like, as of, as of now, as we saw in the promo scene, it's like Tyrion's, like, looking at her, and she walks out to, like... She's the, a conqueror now. She's a conqueror. Which... Salid and Dothraki all in front of her and everyone else. And then you have Aya in the crowd just looking at her. She's bro. pissed. She's 100% pissed. John is pissed. Like, he's like, what the fuck did we just do? Because We the, are now the bad guys. The promo didn't show much of John, though, did it? No. I think it was only Danny, Tyrion, and Aya is all you oh, saw yeah, in right. that whole thing. Well, and this is where I mentioned that they vilified our heroes. Yeah. Because guess what? Our heroes are now the bad guys. Realistically, yeah. Like, they are ruled by... a tyrannical queen i'm interested to see how much of the king's landing population is still left alive if any at all if any yeah yeah and i mean she apparently still has a bunch of dothraki and unsullied yeah right um yeah so last episode of game of thrones is uh gonna be coming up so that'll be fun yeah and it'll be the end of game of thrones and that will be it until the prequels i guess yeah sorry it's the ipad I just realized what yeah. time it was. We've been rolling for like almost two hours. Yeah, whatever um, happens. Thrones, right? <laughs> whatever will be, will be. So yeah. I'm trying to see if I can get a shot. No, that's the wrong shot. Um, get your shot. That'll work. Sorry, people. Uh, okay, let's wrap this up. Okay. Uh, without any pauses. Um, that's it. That's our episode. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, a little bit of a longer one again, but uh, I don't know. I enjoy these longer ones. I can go on for fucking days. Yeah. Um, 
Thank you, everybody, once again. And uh, make sure you're following Entertained Facts on Instagram and you're following the F Word Podcast on uh, Instagram as well and the F Word Podcast at Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter at the F Words G. If you feel so inclined, you can email us at the F Word Podcast at gmail.com. And you can, of course, find us on Stitcher. You can find us on Podbean, Pocket, Pocket Cast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and a whole whack of other places, 11 in total. And, of course, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, the F word where I have some older videos of me doing reviews, um, a lot of Netflix stuff. So if you're trying to find something on Netflix, you can always pop in there and uh, be like, hey, I passed by this as a review for it. And you can find me doing an older review where the quality is half assed. And by half assed, I mean not as good as it got towards the end. And I'm rambling. I'm G. I'm Vass. And we're out. <laughs>